clearly, when I did my breakdown video, I missed a few Easter eggs in Luthen's shop in episode 4 of the Andor show. So here is every, and I hopefully mean every, Easter egg there is in Luthen's shop. Let's not wait any further and get straight into it. In the background of the shop, we can actually see a Gungan shield, the same type used by the Gungans in the Battle of Naboo. We also see some Mandalorian armor, or at the very least, the chestplate part of it. In the next scene, we can see in the background a tree like Kalakori. Now, the Kalakori was a family heirloom that was passed from parent to child. The Kalakori is a representation of the different generations of a particular family, and every generation would make additions to it in order to include themselves in the family legacy. Most Kalakoris are made out of rather simple materials, such as the one owned by Sindula's family, and aren't worth much to people outside the Twi'lek species. However, the one that we see in the Andor shell appears to be a much more extravagant version of that Kalakori, perhaps suggesting that this piece must have once belonged to a rather prominent family. We also get to see Starkiller's armor from the game The Force Unleashed. This armor was known as the Sith Stalker armor, in which the armor itself was painfully grafted onto the skin of its wearer. It was commonly worn by Sith assassins, and due to its design, it permitted the user to use Force Lightning without any side effects. It was first seen in the dark ending to the game The Force Unleashed, in which Starkiller would wear it after overthrowing Vader and becoming Palpatine's new apprentice, so it's super cool to see it make a return to canon here. We also get to see a piece straight out of the prequels, and that is the helmet that we see here. This is, in fact, a Wookiee helmet, the very same one worn by the Wookiee Salporan during the Battle of Kashyyyk. So I guess following the Battle of Kashyyyk and the subsequent enslavement of the Wookiees by the Empire, Salporan must have died or been captured, leading this piece of armor to wind up in the hands of Imperials or on the market for collectors such as Luthen to acquire. Luthen mentions a Utapauan monk cudgel. This is of course from the world of Utapau, the scene of Kenobi and Grievous' last confrontation in Revenge of the Sith. Next, very briefly in the background, we can just about make out Plo Koon's breathing mask, or at the very least, the breathing mask worn by members of the Keldor species. These masks, known as the Antiox masks, were used to help members of the species survive in oxygen-rich environments, and each of these masks have specific patterns that are unique to certain Keldor clans. It's pretty unlikely that this is Plo Koon's mask, as the Jedi Master did die on Kato Nemoidia in a massive fireball. But then again, the mask could have been recovered only for it to end up in Luthen's shop. We then get a brief look at some interesting looking slabs with some strange markings. These are in fact the same markings first seen in Rebels when Ezra unlocks the way to travel through time. The markings originated from the Ones, a family of extremely strong Force users who resided on the planet Mortis. The father, the son, and the daughter, each the embodiment of a different side to the Force. So it's pretty crazy to see these markings make an appearance here. We then get some neat camera work as the camera pans just as Luthen reverts back to his normal self. In the background, we can vaguely make out the shapes of a Jedi and Sith holocron. Again, the fact that Luthen has all this is really just a testament to his ability to find rare items. We also get to see a few slabs of carbonite, which is the same method used to capture Han Solo. So that was hopefully every Easter egg in Luthen's shop. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. I am the Lost Acolyte, and I have spoken.